I don't know if you remember, but 12 months ago, one of the main topics in the media was the arrival of several thousand refugees in Canada, refugees from Syria. And many Canadians as generously opened their wallet, their doors, their heart in the following months. Others were concerned by the whole enterprise. They wonder if we were welcoming too many of them. They were afraid that those strangers would progressively overtake us. Some even bother that some believe that they were bothered because they believe that some terrorists uh, might slip through the system and would eventually attack Canada. Well, as we begin 2017, uh, the latest number tells us that we, Canada has welcomed 40,000 refugees from Syria, sponsored either by the government or, the, or private groups like churches, our churches, for example. And those 40,000 individuals represent only 0.1% of the whole Canadian population. Not 1%, 0.1%. And there were no terrorist attacks. And we discover that all those refugees were in fact doctors, teachers, uh, accounts, computer specialists, university students who now are here 12 months later, still trying to learn French and or English, um, find a job to feed their family and try to get used to Canadian winter. Although this agitation, commotion, worries related to these men, women and children coming from the East was mostly based on the fear. Fear to see our comfort and privileged position in society disturbed. Well, on this Epiphany Sunday, the lectionary brings us another story of men coming from the East. We know them because they're present in our crashes. These are example of our church, we do not exactly know where they come from, who they were. Still, we refer to them as magi, uh, wise men, kings, astrologers, priests. We even, tradition even gave them name, Melchior, Caspar, Balthazar. Some even suggest the came from places we know today as Iran, Iraq, Syria, area of the world we seem to fear the most these days. But to think about this, I guess we will never know for sure. For what we can understand in the scripture, from the story we, found, we find in the gospel according to Matthew, is these educated men, when they drop everything, Everything they were doing left their country and decided to follow a star. They were looking for a new light in the world for those sitting in darkness as promised in the text of the prophet Isaiah. They hoped for the coming of someone who would deliver the needy, the poor, and those who have no helper as proclaimed in the psalm. They believed this light signal the beginning of a new era, who knows, the birth of a new king. And during their quest, this band of travelers met a king, oh yes, but not necessarily the sort of king they were looking for. No, they met the man known as Herod the Great. And the time of King Herod, as said in the text, was not a happy time, <laughs> but one of oppression, suffering, injustice, and brutality. Historical document tells us that Herod was the kind of man who used all the resources at his disposal to subjugate the people, 
and maintain his authority. So you can imagine how thrill he was when a group of uninvited strangers show up at his place and tell him a new king of the Jew has been born. You see, Herod has built for himself a comfortable kingdom that serves him well. He has all the power he wants, life is good for him. And when those visitors told him their, their good news in a way, Herod thinks he's going to lose everything. It's the end of the world as he knew it. He's frightened in all Jerusalem with him. And as we read this story, we might be surprised by the strong emotional reaction of Herod and all the good people of Jerusalem because, after all, that was the news, the birth of a baby who did not have an army or the resource to overthrow the established powers. There, there was no rational reason to be afraid. And yet he was, and yet the people of Jerusalem were. And there's a little part of us that can somehow understand this fear. I believe that almost all of us are afraid to be profoundly disturbed. And I'm not talking about when we're at home sitting in a good couch about to watch a, a good movie and, and the phone rings and it's a survey. And, no, no, not that kind of disturbance. No, um, I'm talking about to be disturbed, challenged, confronted in our lifestyles and our values. We usually react strongly when we perceive that our assets, our status, our position in society are in jeopardy. We usually do not appreciate when we believe that all that we have gained in our lives could be taken away or, to be, or disappear. We usually are afraid when visitors come in our place and begin to challenge the rules that govern our communities or telling us maybe we should act differently. We usually do not like to be upset in this way. And Eric reacted like so many men and women have done in a similar situation. On the surface, he says all the right words. He says to his guests, oh, I consulted with the chief priests and the scribes of the people, and they told me that you should go to Bethlehem. And once you find this beautiful baby, come back, tell it to me, so I can also go and pay my homage. Oh, that's really beautiful, eh? But in reality, <laughs> Era is only interested to save his assets and position in society. Don't want to see the, the system that works so well for him to be changed or to disappear. He does not want to take a chance, so he preferred to eradicate the threat. So he ordered a massacre of innocent children. All the boys in the town of Bethlehem under the age of two. Of course, these days, we civilized and educated people do not turn to bloodshed to solve our issues. No, no, no. That's too barbaric. We're a little more subtle these days. Rather, when we feel our way of life is threatened, we create arcane programs. We build walls. We close our borders. After all, if the massacre of people with a different tone of skin, religion, or language happen over there, you feel a little less responsible. I know, I know it's not pleasant to hear these words. But how many children do you think died in Aleppo last December when all of us were getting busy to prepare for the birth of Jesus? How many live today in refugee camps 
without access to a classroom, a bed, or even clean water? How many will die before the end of the day because of bombs or malnutrition? Do we know? Do we really want to know? Yeah. And when we struggle too much with our conscience, we try to convince ourselves that the situation is complicated, our leaders are doing their best, and we cannot really do more than what we're doing right now. And maybe it's true. Maybe. Or maybe our leaders and all of us should pay closer attention to this morning travelers and learn a little from them. These uninvited guests, these strangers, these pagans, when facing a rather difficult situation, take the higher road. After finding the infant Christ and paying him homage, they decide to return to their own country by another road. And by doing so, they rejected little political games. They refused to enable a system of oppression. They confronted and resist evil. These men coming from East, who were at the source of the fears of the established power, show everyone what humanity should be. And I believe that all of us face regularly the same choice, the same challenges. We might not follow a star to find a newborn king, but as Thomas Long wrote, the world is full of stars, events in nature, personal experience, and history that point toward the mystery of God. In our journeys to follow God's call, to live by the teaching of Jesus, to move where the Spirit leads us, we usually become increasingly aware of the conflicts in the world, the injustice and inequity surrounding us, and the struggles of our human brothers and sisters. And we constantly have to decide which road to follow. Do we prefer to walk the path of fear, protection of status, privilege and assets? and perpetuate the so-called normalcy of our society that works very well for us? Or are we brave enough to embark on the difficult journey of generosity, openness, love, and radical welcome of those considered foreigners and, to, and those who might threat our comfort? Are we courageous enough to accept to be challenged and disturbed in, a ways we, in, in ways we do not necessarily appreciate? Are we ready to be transformed by the news of the birth of a single baby? You see, those figurants are much more than mere decoration in our nativity scene. They are reminder of what is the best and the worst in human nature. They represent travelers from a distant land looking for new light in our world. And they met darkness, fear, domination, murder. They are the symbol of the challenges and the disruption we meet every day. These strangers coming from East are an example for all of us. An example in our desire to build a better world, to include all, to follow the stars, to follow where God wants us to go and to be. Thanks be to God for them, and amen.